lamp lighters are coming out to the right. That's all I'll say. Hi, folks. I just got back from the mayor. The good news is he's uh, upright. So we won't have to put the head between his crotch and call him a rhino man. But we did have a plan. Uh, and I, I was uh, uh, also at uh, temple camp, and, and the temple will be opening this evening. So let me say a few words about um, Fly. Um, well, let me talk about this camp. Let me talk about all, you, you know that all year long we've been in philosophical sentiment pumping about essays about money. Well, I'm like about following the money, thinking about money. And, um, Tell me talk about money. Uh, it, it starts with this camp. In, in the early days, this camp was Checkpoint Salon and then became First Camp simply because, not that it's premier, a premier place really, it, it just was the first camp. <laughs> and, uh, and, and throughout the 90s, we were uh, the organizers we're in constant survival mode. It was, I don't know if some of you older timers remember, but it was one existential crisis after another. We were beaten up by the county authorities, we were beaten up by the state authorities, we were beaten up by the federal government. They tried in 97 to haul us out behind the, the shed and beat us up and take our wallet. And they almost succeeded. And. Uh, but we came back, and that was the founding of the regional. That was the founding of the regional movement because everybody got together and sent us money. Uh, people, those of you who are who are lifetime members, now nah, there we go. That was the best deal anybody ever got. <laughs> and, and and that was on the way out. Now, not in a normal concert or, or, or consumption-based event, people don't normally give money to the management as they leave the event. And, um, and, and for years, during all of that tumult, uh, the, well, I, I would spend my days talking to the media uh, about community, about the collaboration of the artists, about 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 how uh, how culture was, community was creating culture, and then I'd come back to this place and the pressure per square inch around here was like the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Because we were huddled constantly trying to figure out just how to survive and how to keep this city alive. And, and we couldn't tell most of those stories because it's politics. And, uh, but gradually, Mary, my colleague Marion took the uh, initiative and began to fashion this place into a home. And, and, and then into a village. And, and at which point, instead of huddling, and we had heard that there were people coming with all kinds of wonderful skills in the world, but we didn't know them because we formed too, formed too tight a circle as we, as we plotted survival together. But we knew there were people with wealth who were coming to the event, but we didn't we move in those circles. And uh, gradually, we turned it into a village and then we began inviting people to come in and join us. And we did the key thing that you should always do. We, we said, let's sit, we, we, every day we'll sit down and we'll have three meals together. And during all that time, I want you to know, we never hustled anybody. Not once. It was radical inclusion. And it was just plain decency. And, uh, and that's how we got to know a lot of people who formerly were orbiting in circles you know, elsewhere in this growing metropolis. And then after a while, as, as Will said, we were pursuing Fly Ranch 20 years ago. John Casey, who owned it, offered us the ranch sitting on a motel bedroom, and it was a bed in a motel in a place he owned in Reno, and offered us the ranch for just to stick a finger in the eye of the BLM, he on the rancher, and, and he offered it to us for $400,000. Oh Damn, so uh, We were a dime short, we were two minutes late, might as well have been four, four million dollars. And um, so gradually what happened is uh, having met people, we, we knew that we had to raise that money 
from, we, we had to raise large sums from a few people. Because if we went public and broadcast yep. about it, then, then, then land values would have come up. Oh, all hell would have broken out. And everybody would have been arguing about what we were going to do with it before we even secured the purchase price. And so we went to a few people. And, and, and what we did is we simply <laughs> took them out to the ranch. We paid the owners to do it, the people we had purchased it from, and showed it to them. And that was that. We, we, we didn't hustle them. And, and then when the time came and the opportunity arose to actually acquire, after all of those years, then we went to those people and what we did is we had a few dinners. We sat down at a table together and talked about it. And with the result that, uh, with the result that we took in six million dollars from a very few people and and um, it, it it wasn't a transaction. You know, one person asked, "Well, what are the term? What is the term sheet?" There was no term sheet. There there was no architectural plan. There was no we we were ready to let it grow the way this has grown organically from the interactions of all these all of you and everybody else, and and, and feel our way into it the way a family would develop a piece of land. Because as a business, that's what we've been. We've been a family too, and and so that money came in, and just in time, it was down to the wire and the last contribution, and and no term sheet. It was we 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 sent one person who was asking a term. He said, "Is there a term sheet?" We said, "Sent." We said, "Well, we'll send you what we have." And what we have was, "I pledge such and such dollars." Period. And that was it. Done. There was no, there was no quid pro quo, none. It was a pure gift. And that's because they had lived among us, we had welcomed them. They had internalized the ethos that all of you bear with you. And so it just seemed the natural thing to do. Now what I plan to do is go back to the community and say, look, we've been demonizing these one percenters all this time, accusing them of being sparkle ponies. Good God, people, do you remember, you know how widespread that sparkle, that sparkle pony species is in this city? And they've been, they've been and, and there's been ugly sentiment, you know, it's sort of mirrored in the political campaign, ugly sentiment about these, you know, these people, they don't give back to anyone. They don't give back to anyone. They, they have these compounds. Have you walked down these back streets and, and, and seen these, these almost anomalous neighborhoods where no one's even <laughs> bothered to put, you know, something on the outside of the vehicles? And, and what I want to say to everyone is it, these people gave us gifts. Real, pure gifts. No, no role guaranteeing governance. No DACA. You know, a little hideaway they're going to build, fly ranch. Well, then, why can't the 99%, why can't the generality of people give $200? Because my goal is that in two years, as much money is going to be coming from the absolute ground roots as it comes on high. And then we will have taught this country that, 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 that people can get along. If it's possible to the meaning of a real community. It will be an achievement. It will be an achievement. And that, that'll be that'll be an example to the world. And at that point, Obama will be the president, whoever it is. I think I know what it's going to be. You know, won't, won't be won't be bidding their daughter to come to Burning Man. She'll come <laughs> it, because we're moving out into the world, Yikes. and we're going to change it. And we're going to start by addressing the very things that divide this nation today. Yay. Thanks. Woo! Bye.